Hello and welcome to this presentation on the facade design pattern. As per Wikipedia, the definition of facade is that it is an object that provides a simplified interface to a larger body of code such as a class library. The facade design pattern uses facade object. Let's take a look at this with the help of an example. So on the left hand side we have a person who wants to conduct a survey in an office building which is shown on the right hand side and the surveyor wants to collect three pieces of information from each employee in that building. The employee's age range, income range and name of their favorite cafe in the city. The surveyor can conduct this survey by talking to each employee in that building. Or an alternate option is to talk to the supervisor in the building, let's assume the CEO, hand over the survey sheets and then let that person conduct the survey, talk to each of their employees and then present the collected information back to the surveyor. That person, the CEO or the supervisor, acts as a facade and simplifies the interface of the surveyor to the employees of the building. So that person is a facade. Here is a software design example. In this class diagram, on the right hand side, we have a class library called the Geographical Services Library, which includes three classes, Address Validator, Geocode Helper, and distance calculator. Address validator has a method called validate address that accepts an address as a string object and returns a USPS validated address as a string, assuming the address is valid. If the address is invalid, let's assume it returns an empty string. The geocode helper class accepts an address as a string object and returns a point object that contains the X and Y coordinates or the latitude and longitude associated with that address. The distance calculator calculates the distance between two point objects and returns the distance as a double data type. On the left hand side, we have the client class that has to do the calculation of distance between the two addresses that are both string. This class interacts with the three classes in the Geographical Services Library to calculate the distance. Let's take a look at the code. First, the client class has to create address validator object and pass the first address. Assuming it's valid, it has to do the same thing for the second address. Once it gets the two validated addresses the right format, it has to get the coordinates of the first address by calling geocode helper object. It has to do the same thing for the second address. And finally, it has to call the distance calculator object and pass the points or the latitude and longitudes associated with both the addresses. Finally, it returns the distance. As you can see, the interface to the geographical services library is complicated and requires interactions with three different classes in that library. Here is the class diagram with a facade class introduced. In this example, all the classes are the same except a new geographical services facade class is introduced in the left hand bottom side. The client interacts with the Geographical Services Facade class or an instance of it and the Facade class instance interacts with Address Validator, Geocode Helper and Distance Calculator. The interface to the Geographical Services Library is simplified by the introduction of the Geographical Services Facade class so the client's interface to the library is very simple. Let's take a look at the code now. 
It's pretty simple. The client class calls geographical services facade object dot get distance and passes the two addresses and in return it gets the distance as a double data type and this value is returned. So this is a very simple interface now between the client and the geographical services library because of the introduction of the geographical services facade. Let's discuss a few advantages of the facade design pattern. First of all, it makes a library much easier to use, test and document because the interface to the library is very simple. Please keep in mind that the total number of interactions between the facade and the class library's classes remain the same. We could refactor the code and the design to reduce the dependencies by introducing a factory pattern. But in this example, we are really interested in simplifying the interface between the client and the library by introducing a facade. We definitely reduced dependencies between the external client, which is the client class on the left-hand side that we saw earlier, and the classes inside the library, because the client no longer has any dependency on the classes inside the library. It routes all its requests through the facade object. And in this example, you could probably argue that the API of the library is poorly designed if the goal of the library is just to provide the distance between two addresses, maybe the first two classes should not have been exposed to an external class outside that library. Maybe the third class, which was the distance calculator and its solitary method and could have been introduced. Or maybe the facade class could have its counterpart inside the class library and we could just have a class with a method that acts accepts two address objects and returns the distance between them. So that's an example where a poorly designed library can be wrapped by a facade class. And if you notice that you have to change your design to introduce facades to a subsystem or maybe a collection of classes, maybe you need to take another look at how those classes are designed in the library. That brings us to the end of this presentation. Hope you found this video helpful. Your feedback as always is appreciated and I hope to see you in another video. Thanks again.